How's it going everybody? My name is Sho Taylor and I am inside because it's super cold and I really don't want to be out there. So I'm going to show you a Lightroom tutorial on how you can turn a bad photo that looks like this and turn it into something that looks like this. So let's go ahead and get started. Cue that intro. One of the things that I was really bad at when I first started photography was the white balance. I didn't understand it and so I always just kept it on auto white balance which was a huge mistake. A long time ago I did a photo shoot with the amazing Jade Elaine. I'll include the link to her Instagram below, go give her a follow. But this particular photo came out so blue because even though auto balance can most of the time do a really good job, it did a terrible job with this photo. So I'm gonna show you guys how I use Lightroom to fix this photo because even though Lightroom can't fix everything, it does a pretty dang good job of being able to fix quite a bit. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've already cropped this to a four x five just because I'm assuming that we're gonna be posting this on Instagram. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna bring out some of that detail by lowering the highlights and bringing up the shadows. And what I like to do is bring down the highlights to about a negative 23 and then bring up the shadows maybe to about a plus 29. Now I personally like brighter whites, so I'm gonna bring up that white point up to maybe a plus four, and then we're not gonna do anything with the blacks just yet, but we're gonna go ahead and skip down to the points curve. If you're not familiar with the points curve, there's three basic points that we kinda click on and move around, the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. And what we're gonna do is we're first gonna bring up those highlights just a little bit, and then at the very top, we're gonna bring down that very top point. As you can see on the histogram, it's gonna stop it from being blown out when the, the highlights go to the very edge of that top bar. And then we're gonna go ahead and bring down those shadows just a little bit. And then at the very bottom part of those shadows, you have that point that we're gonna bring up. It's, it's gonna give it a little bit more of a faded look. Now obviously if you go too strong with it, it's gonna just make everything look gross and so you don't wanna do that, you wanna be pretty subtle. So we're gonna put it maybe about there. And finally we're gonna go to the mid-tones point and as you can tell if we mess around with this just a little bit and we bring it down, it's gonna darken everything. But we're gonna actually bring it up above that line just because I wanna bring out the detail in the face and highlight the face just a little bit. This is pretty faded. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the black point and we're gonna bring that back down maybe to halfway, maybe like a negative 57 around there. Um, that looks pretty good. And then we may go back and just make that fade even more subtle by playing around with that. You can bring it down just a little bit. As you can tell, just on the detail, we are seeing a lot of progress. So going from the before and then going back to the after, you can see those subtle edits just make a really big difference. And now we're gonna go down to the color manipulation. We're gonna start off with the temperature and the tint. It's gonna look a little bit wacky at first just because it's gonna make things a little bit brighter than we want them, but we'll go back later and we'll fix that with the exposure. A really good tip that I have is I like to make all of my edits based on the skin tone because I like to have really good skin tones. And so as you can tell on the image, there is a lot of blue. So if everything is looking really blue, then we're gonna go to the opposite direction. So we're gonna bring everything over to the warmer side, maybe about a plus 21. That by itself has done a lot to fix the skin tones and make it just a little bit softer, a little bit more realistic instead of being so blue like a Smurf. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to the tint. You're not gonna need to do too much with the tint, but I do see quite a bit of green in my image, especially in the skin tones, so I wanna make that a little bit more natural. And so we're gonna move that slightly over maybe to a plus two on the magenta side. This next part is pretty up to you. It's kind of more about preference, but I personally like to bring the vibrance down just a little bit, and then I like to bring the saturation up to around a plus five. I usually don't like to go much more than a plus five, just because as you can see, if you go all the way up, it just makes everything look overly saturated and overcolored and fake, and so I like to bring it 
back down maybe to a between a plus four and a plus six so we'll go with like a plus five the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to the color mixer the first color I like to start with is red there's not much we need to do as far as hue and saturation but I do want to talk about the luminance if I bring that down it's gonna make the skin tone just a lot darker as well as if I bring it all the way up it's gonna make the skin tone look really washed out but because I do want to highlight the skin just a little bit brighten up that face I'm gonna bring up that luminance just a little bit brightens up the skin tone but not too much and going back to the skin tone really quick, it does look overly bright, but like I said before, at the very end, we're gonna go back to the exposure and we're gonna bring that back down so it looks natural. Now with the orange color, again, there's not much we have to do with the hue or saturation just because we've already fixed that in the temperature and the tint, but we will bring down the luminance just a little bit. If we bring up that luminance all the way to the very top, what it's gonna do is it's gonna wash out and blow out the, the skin color, the skin tone, and we don't want that because it looks very unnatural. So we're gonna actually bring it down to maybe a negative 31 just to, to even out those mid-tones and the gradient from the highlights to the shadows in the face. That looks really good. The next color that we have is yellow, and this is more for preference because as you can tell, if I move around the hue on the yellow, it's not gonna really do much to alter the image or change it, but I'm gonna take out a lot of the green and yellow color by sliding it more over to the red, on the green color, it's not gonna do anything to change the skin tone. This is more just for preference on the background. If I slide the hue over to the aqua side, it's gonna change the color of that bush over to uh, a more teal or aqua color. Um, but I actually like it to be a little bit more on the orange side, a little bit more warmer, just because we do have a lot of turquoises and aquas. And so we're gonna slide that over to a negative 96. And I really like that. It just kind of tames down that aqua color just a little bit in the photo. The next color we're gonna change and alter just a little bit is the aqua color itself. It's gonna sound kind of bass backwards, but in order for us to create a really soft aqua color in our photo, we're actually gonna slide that hue on the aqua over to the blue. And we're gonna slide that over to about a plus 31. And then, as you can tell, there's already a lot of blue and aqua color in this photo. And so we're gonna tame that down just a little bit by bringing down the saturation to like a negative 25. And now we're gonna go up to the blue color and we're gonna do the opposite than what we did with the aqua color. So in the aqua color, we slid it over to the blue side in the hue, but in the blue color, we're gonna change that hue and slide it over to the aqua color. And that's gonna tame down that top left corner where you see a lot of blue. We're gonna maybe make it to a negative 15. And then again, we're gonna bring down that saturation just to tame it a little bit. If you go too much, it's gonna turn the the whole image gray so you don't want to do that you also don't want to bring it all the way up so we're going to bring it down to maybe a negative 15. that looks pretty good to me now that's everything that we have to do for the color mixing and as you can tell if we go to the before and the after it's just those small differences those small little alterations that's going to change the image tame down those blues and those aquas really bring out the orange and the skin tone and that gives you that orange and teal look and then coming down to a clarity, you can either leave this alone, bring it down or bring it up. It's totally up to your preference. I personally do like to bring up the clarity just a little bit, obviously not too much. Otherwise it just looks like a complete disaster and looks unrealistic. I'm going to bring that up maybe to a plus 10. That looks really good. It looks super natural and just brings out some of the detail. And then if we go down to the vignette, if you bring it all the way down or all the way up, it's gonna look awful. But I will bring it down just a little bit to darken the background and highlight the subject, which is the model. Now the final step as far as color correction is, we're gonna go down to the split toning. If you aren't already using the split toning, start using it, it's really great. You can see that in the face, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually bring out the oranges in the highlights and the midtones, and then we're gonna 
bring out the blues and the shadows and it really makes your photos pop. So we're gonna go over to the shadows and then we're gonna bring it to a hue of around 216 and a saturation of 13. And then we're gonna go over to the highlights and we're gonna bring it over to the orange area and we're gonna make the hue maybe to around like, we want it to be around 44, 45, and the saturation to be around a 31. And then as you can tell, we can slide it either more towards the blue or more towards the orange. And so I will want to bring out the orange in the image just a little bit more. So I'm gonna slide it maybe three fourths over to the right, which is the orange area. That looks fantastic. And then, like I said, we're gonna finish it up with the exposure. We're gonna bring down that exposure just a little bit to make it natural and also make it a little bit more artistic. We'll bring that down to a negative 0.42. You have a before and an after. And that is it. And that is how I use Lightroom to fix certain photos that may have not turned out the way that I personally would have liked them to and turn it into a photo that I can be proud of and something that I want to give my clients, something that I know that they will like. Moral of the story, don't use auto white balance, but if you're gonna use auto white balance, you can use Lightroom to fix it. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and give me a follow on Instagram as well. And until next time, I will see you later.